Welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be talking to you about the book study that we've been doing on the book Uninvited. Calissa had the idea to kind of start like a little like women's book group like a month or two ago. Yeah. And we've had two sessions of it so far. Tonight's actually our third. And so we figured we'd just do a couple videos just to like recap what we do every couple of sessions mm -hmm. to kind of talk about it. Whether you're just interested or whether you can't make it to the meetings or whatever. We just think it'd be good to talk about because we have some really good conversations here. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just hear snack? Oh, I really need my ice water after dinner. Pop -tart. <laughs> so you're here with us in spirit if you'd like to follow along. Yeah. So we don't really have anything like specific plan that we're going to talk about. We figure we'll just kind of recap what I feel like we've talked about the last two times we've met. Yeah. So hopefully you like it. Where should we start? Insert song. Let's start with night one was chapters one through three. I just need a refresh of what chapters what one, two, and three were. <laughs> I'd rather ignore honesty. I think chapters one through three, when we watched the video, I think Lisa's like takeaway from that first session was live loved, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like her whole like summary or points to that first episode and that first chunk of book, those first three chapters, was that if you live loved by God, then you don't have to like beg for scraps of love from other people. Mm -hmm. So like, even if you do face rejection, cause this book is all about like rejection and like feeling like lonely or left uninvited. out or yeah, <laughs> uninvited, that then you also still have that person in God. Does yeah. that like ring any bells? Yeah. Yeah. The um, I feel like I always just connect to her stories the most. Mm -hmm. The story that sticks out from the first three chapters to me was chapter three. There's a lady at the gym who hates me, yeah. and we talked about this with the group that was here the first set, like the first time we met. Mm -hmm. And um, I just like that one because I feel like as girls sometimes we take like other people's facial expressions mm -hmm. or some people's like body language towards us really negatively and you just automatically assume that someone doesn't like you just because they might not say hi or they might not make eye contact with you which is basically what happened to her at the gym and I just related a lot to that because I feel like we can all kind of jump to assumptions and feel rejected by people even when they when are they're not, not really when they're not really rejecting us at all because then she comes to find out that that lady doesn't hate her and smiles at her one day and it like makes her day so I feel like that was like my main takeaway in chapter three, which Cliss also talked about, like, if you live love, then you're not, like, trying to seek that acceptance from everybody around you all the time. Yeah, yeah. what I was about to say was that, like, it's kind of like that, like, when, I, I don't remember if this was in the first section, but it was saying how, like, if you were to go to, like, an outing or something, to something with, like, a group of people, and maybe, like, good. you know that, um, that it's, like, Okay, so you're going to like a place where there's like a bunch of people. Maybe it's like a party or like some something. Um, usually, if it's like an awkward situation, you the first thing you would do is like pull out your phone because you don't want to like have to deal with the awkwardness. Like everyone knows, like when you're pa passing someone in the hallway, your immediate reaction is like. Like, you know, I feel like everyone does That's that. Crazy. I know. Yeah. And, but the thing about like, what both of them were saying about living loved is that you don't have to like fear going to like places with a bunch of people, like thinking that, oh, I won't make any connections. Like, I'm just going to be like lonely there. People are going to think I'm like, you know, you don't have to fear that those like thoughts because you can go in there like already knowing that you're loved by him and then being able to portray that onto others without feeling like you need to receive it in return. Like you can give it without feeling like, you need to like, get that from those people and stuff yeah. like in return. And, and you just don't like to, yeah. going into social perfect. situations, like not afraid what everyone's going to think of you all the time. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's like 
what she's talking about. Like, it says I refreshed my Instagram four times because she was at this party. And I, I feel like we can We've all, all like that. There. And Clissa and I talked about, like, it's so bad. Like, in college, like, everyone just stands outside of class and sits around on their phones until the professor starts. Like, no one actually tries to have conversation with people that they don't know. Like, in today's society, because I feel like a lot of times you're just, like, worried that they're going to think you're weird. Fear of rejection. And, yeah. Yeah. You just fear being rejected by them. So... That was, that was also my main thing in our second session yeah. that I like loved. So topic of session one, I feel like was live loved. Topic of session two was when you go in with an attitude of like, what can I give as opposed to what can I receive? It changes your, almost like your bravery. Cause it's like, if you're, if your goal, it's kind of like thinking about what your motivation is whenever you meet people. If your goal is to like look good or be accepted or be the, like loudest person in the room or have the most attention. Like if that's your goal, then you set yourself up for feeling more of that rejection. But if your goal is to just like make other people feel comfortable or find that person who may be sitting staring at their phone, like acting mm -hmm. really awkward. Like if your goal is to give and not receive, it takes all the pressure off of you. I feel like that goes along with like literally like everything. I feel like it's all about your expectations of things because like, I, let me just give you a bunch of stories. That's also like, a section too, is expectation. Like, with meeting, going to a place and meeting strangers, you don't want to have the expectation like they were just talking about feeling like that. And like with friends, you don't want to have the expectation of like always agreeing on things with like marriage and stuff. You don't like, you should be focusing more on what you can like give more than like thinking about what you can get from them. Um, there was something that I just thought about the other day. Um, and also on like, I know this isn't like a dating thing, but like, um, it can be because going off, yeah, mm -hmm. but like going off with like also the expectations like, um, like I was just like listening to the podcast today and it was about like first dates and stuff and I feel like a lot of people go into their first dates as in like, this has to be like like, this has to be perfect like I'm already planning my entire life with him but I feel like <laughs> you need to focus on just like going there and enjoying yourself and like, um, focusing more on just like having a good time and like getting to know people and stuff than like putting so much pressure on it yeah so it's just like changing your perspective yeah. of, about social interaction social interaction in general and i think i feel like that's what lisa's goal in this is to do because mm -hmm. in that second session one of some of the biggest like there's a whole page on like expectations and like what you expect of other people and it was talking and it the first thing it says is no person is equipped to be the constant lifeline to another so like you can't constantly going into rooms or going to parties or going to your partner or whatever, being like, you are the person I'm depending on to get me through this situation. Or like, Nobody's I need your God. I need to have you there or I'm not going. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just thinking about your dependency on other people as opposed to God. And then the very next paragraph says, some of our biggest disappointments in life are the result of expectations we have of others that they can ne never possibly meet. So it's like, whenever you place that expectation of other people, like, oh, they have to like me. Oh, they have to help me. Oh, they have to be there. That's when you do face that possible rejection because they could be busy or maybe they don't like you for whatever reason, you know? Like people, people are human. It allows other people to be human when you release that expectation of them. The other thing I was thinking about <laughs> in session one. So before we went over to like, going out in social situations. When Karim was talking about the, the girl at the gym that hates me or whatever, I think one of the other conversations we had, and we had this specifically with Maggie, I remember, it was like when a lot of times we put our insecurities on other people. So my example was like, if I know I have like a zit on my face, I'm assuming that that person is like staring at my zit. Mm -hmm. Or if I know that I I'm like- really happy today. <laughs> that literally happened today in my bra, yeah. I was like, I know this bra is lumpy, don't look at it. I was like, I love it. Anyway, no, no. But I mean, it's not with you guys, I don't care about with you guys. Right. But like, when you're out, you like place those like insecurities that you have about yourself on other people. You yeah. assume, like my thing is that I always think people, I assume people think the worst of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me too. When that shouldn't be me what too. you assume, because that again, sets you up for more rejection. I think like as women, especially we do that. We're like, mm -hmm. oh man, they see the flaw, they see the wrinkle, they see the roots, they see the X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. Or same thing with your personality. I'm too loud, I'm too shy, I'm X, Y, Z. But we shouldn't be thinking that that's what they're going to be thinking of us. And then off of that, Maggie was mentioning, she's like a lot of times when I put that rejection on myself, 
I turn around and put that rejection back on them. Mm -hmm. So like if, if I think somebody doesn't like me or I don't think somebody's accepting me, then I turn around and I'm like, well, I don't like them anyway. Yeah, so it's like, it's just a destructive two-way street whenever you're solely focused on like acceptance from other humans. Which I'm sure like guys kind of like relate, but I feel like it's yeah. also very okay. different for them. Cause I feel like that sometimes where girls get very like mm -hmm. competitive or like spiteful towards each other is just because you assume that people don't like you or people is like whatever. But I feel like, I don't know. I feel like guys don't do that quite as much. Yeah. No, I, that, I feel the same way. And I know, I feel like their pressures are different pressures. Yeah. But I feel like the pressure- There's more on like, June. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> Like masculine stuff. Yeah, I can go beer. Is a lot of <laughs> Yeah, that is true. I'm trying to see if there are any other like um, big things. I feel like those were the big conversations that we had. Of course, they like took other avenues too. But it's just she writes in a way that makes you feel like like there are things that everybody has expected or expected. Everybody's experienced. But then finally somebody's talking about it so you can be like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. me too. The other thing that we talked about was hesi how hesitancy, how being like hesitant to reach out to people, hesitant to do what you feel like the Lord's leading you to do, hesitant to say something to someone, that like fear of rejection can turn into hesitancy and hesitancy can turn into like resistance of what God wants for you. So just being kind of in tune to what you feel like is you're, where you're being led and being obedient to that as opposed to being fearful of it. What was the second session on? The first, one, the first one was about fishing. Yeah, and then the second one was about sheep, Peter. Peter rejecting Jesus. Yeah, and him telling him to go. Go be a shepherd. Be a shepherd, yeah. Yes. Be a sheep. Yes, there we go. The first one was about fishing and how God was like giving out fish and how he's providing. And the second one was about how even Jesus was rejected. Clearly, they crucified him. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it just speaks to how relatable the Bible is because even like the God of the universe has had people turn away from him, even his best friends. Yeah, that was the story of the one about Peter. Mm -hmm. three, three times. Three times. Yeah. And then whenever they were like reconciling, she's chewing a bone. God was like, mm -hmm. go be a shepherd basically and what it means to be a shepherd and how to lead. So. Oh, here, do you want to finish with this since you read this in last week's Yeah. Group? This is the I'll thought that we'll leave you with before we go to our next session, because okay. I'm starting to get thoughts about that. Yeah. yeah. All right, this is what it reads in the little like prayer at the end of this book, of this chapter. It says, though the long path is uncertain, you are so faithful to shed just enough light for me to see the very next step. I now understand this isn't you being mysterious. This is a great demonstration of your mercy. Too much revelation and I'd pridefully run ahead of you. Too little and I'd be paralyzed with fear. So I'm seeking slivers of light in your truth just for today and filling the gaps of my unknown with trust. There you go. Trust in me. He knows exactly what he's doing. It's tough. That was good. That was good. That was a good recap. I hope you remembered a lot. Yeah. And these are things that like I'm trying to remember more in my everyday. There are definitely mm -hmm. days that's not the case, but yeah. yeah, just good reminders. So we only have four more sessions. There's today only six total. Marks halfway. Yeah. So we're, we're doing done today. We'll be half number halfway. three tonight. So yeah, we'll do another one after the next two, and then we'll do a third one after the last one. We'll keep you up to date. Yes. So well, we hope you guys can take something away from this and maybe change yeah. your outlook on social norms and God's love for you. If you want to come to our Bible study, please come. DM us. Seriously, I'll send you my address. Or this is the book we're reading if you just want to look yeah. it up and oh, read yeah. on your own time. It's a good book. Uninvited it's by a good book. Lisa Turker. Anything by, us. <laughs> Anything by her is honestly really good. And so we just talked about chapters one through five. five. Yeah. This next, the next se section that we'll talk about will be chapters six through Ten. 11. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to follow along, you can. Um, and yeah, I'll send anybody that wants it my address. We pretty much have it every other Thursday night. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. So baby, whatever. If, again, if these social things aren't your thing, maybe you can learn a little something from uninvited. But if they are your thing, come hang out. But yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed and got something from this. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. We hope you have a great week. And we'll see, see you real soon. soon. Bye, guys.